Hi everyone, this is Emily Leapart here for Tailored Expressions and in today's video I'm creating three cards with the Bees Knees card making kit. I knew that most samples would feature bees in their traditional colors, so I wanted to do something cute, fun, and out of the box with mine. Let's start with a look at all of the kit ingredients. First up is the Bees Knees Stamp and Stencil Combo. The background stamp stamps the stinger, stripes, and antenna for all the bees. Then the coordinating stencils, which consists of three stencils, completes the bees. The first stencil fills in the body, the second the wings, and the third the eyes. You'll hear me say this more than once, but these bees are just the cutest. The What's the Buzz mini clear stamp set features six sentiments, parts of a bee that you can stamp for a different look, three tiny flowers, and a trail. It's small but mighty since it's packed with everything you need. The coordinating bee dies cuts out the bees from both the stamp and stencil combo as well as the stamped bee from the sentiment set. The honeycomb cluster die is one of my favorites and creates beautiful backgrounds, focal points, and accents for any of the cards you make with this kit. As always, you get six envelope seals and these feature two different colors and sentiments which read, what's the buzz and just be cause. The six envelopes are in Oreo, sugar cube, and honey. The ink colors I've chosen for my cards are two of the new colors, Rose Water and Tropical Punch, plus Fruit Punch and Saltwater Taffy. I've pre-cut the honeycomb cluster from all of these colors, as well as silver glitter cardstock. I also have the hexagons from these die cuts ready to embellish any cards I make, and I can store these so I can easily grab them for future cards. I'm going to start by stamping three backgrounds. I use removable tape on the back of my A2 panel and place it in my mini Misty stamping tool. Then I place the Bees Knees background stamp in the Misty and stamp it with Tropical Punch ink. As I mentioned before, I didn't want to use the traditional black and yellow colors for my bees, so I'm going to create two panels of blue bees and one panel of pink bees. I stamp two panels of Tropical Punch, stamping each one twice for a solid inking with the assistance of the Gist Press tool. After cleaning the background, I then stamp the third background with Fruit Punch ink. Now I'll move on to the stenciling portion. As always, the stencils are etched one through three, and I line up the stamped panel with the first stencil. I use removable tape on the back to keep it in place and place it on a silicone stencil mat. Then I use saltwater taffy ink and a coordinating bitty blender brush to fill in the bodies of this first panel. It's always so fun to see the reveal when it comes to these layering stencils. Since I'm making two panels with the same colors, I can stencil the second panel immediately after. Now I'll wipe down the first stencil and prepare it for stenciling with rose water and its Bitty Blender brush. I just love how these pink bees look. My son thinks they're even more menacing than real bees, but I think they're so pretty and adorable. Now I move on to the wings, which is the second stencil. For the blue bees, I'll be using rose water for their wings, which works out well because I already have that ink pad and itty bitter blender brush out already. Since insect wings are mostly translucent, I try to use a light hand, which isn't easy for me, but I do my best. I do check to see how much the blending shows up, and it's good enough. I do think it needs a bit of a shadow or dimension, so I bring in the fourth color, Fruit Punch, switch the blender brush, and add a tiny bit of Fruit Punch at the base of the wings where it attaches to the bodies. The ombre effect between rose water and Fruit Punch is so pretty. As for the pink bees, I'll be using saltwater taffy for the wings, and I can't wait to see how they turn out. I ended up adding a touch of tropical punch to create an ombre effect with these wings as well. Check out the two panels before I add the eyes. Aren't they the cutest? I get so giddy just looking at these. I felt like Oreo would be too stark for the softer colors, so I chose poppy seed for the eyes on all three panels. This third stencil was very quick to blend. The finished bees are so cute and you can add enamel dots or googly eyes to embellish them further. The reason I stamped and stenciled two panels of blue bees is because I knew I wanted to die cut a bunch of them. Although now I wish I had stenciled two pink panels because they're so adorable and I really didn't want to cut into this panel. I'll know better next time. My next step is to die cut all the bees from one of the blue panels. As you'll see later, I even used some of the partial bees for my design just to preserve the full bead die cuts for later use. For my first card design, I've used the diagonal stitch square stacklets to create a focal point in the center of the card. 
This card base is cut from sea salt, and the frame is cut from poppy seed. However, I completely changed this when it comes to the final card. This combo didn't look right to me while I was creating, but now that I see it on camera, I wish I had left it this way. I arrange all the bees on the square and also die cut one of the large pink bees from the third panel to use as a highlight piece, which will tie into the sentiments I use. Once all the bees are arranged, I pop them on with foam tape and trim off the overhanging bits. As you can see, I even tried a silver glitter border but ended up with a rose water border. I attached the two layers together and used them to position the sentiment in my mini misty before stamping the two sentiments with poppy seed ink. After the card is done, I felt like there were too many sharp corners between the smaller squares and the card base itself, so I used a corner chomper to create two round corners. I used the one quarter inch chomper on the top left corner and the one half chomper on the bottom right corner. Now my first card is done. I do make an addition on this card at the end by adding a silver glitter shadow to the pink bee. For my second card, I create a tropical punch card base and attach a fruit punch panel sized at 3 and 3 quarter inches by 5 inches, flush to the bottom left corner. Then I trim two portions from the silver glitter honeycomb cluster and glue them to opposite corners of the card. I position the die cut bees and add rose water and saltwater taffy hexagons. When the glue is dried, I trim off the overhanging bits and prepare to stamp the sentiment and trail. I place the entire card into my mini misty and stamp both the sentiment and trail using Oreo ink. To finish, I pop on the bees with foam tape, and now my second card is done. For my third card, I'll be using a full panel of blue bees and adding a simple sentiment to it. I'm going to white heat emboss the sentiment that reads, Just Because, on Tropical Punch cardstock. After it's been heat set, I use the mini strips asymmetrical die to cut it out. Then I create a shadow for it using Oreo cardstock. I trim an eighth of an inch off both the left and right sides and attach it to a saltwater taffy card base. I also glue a strip of silver glitter cardstock along the left edge of that panel. I also glue the two layers of sentiment strips together and contemplate popping it up with foam tape. However, I want to keep it easy to mail, so I decide to glue a second layer of Oreo cardstock to bump it up just a little bit. I decided to place the strip in the sweet spot in the middle of the card about one third of the way down and I used a T-ruler to make sure it was straight. Now all my cards are done. Let's review them all. My first card has that extra silver shadow beneath the pink bee, and I mentioned making this change earlier. I love having silver and gold accents on all my cards, and this one was missing that, so I went in and added it. It feels complete now. My second card is a nice contrast to the first card with a bright but darker background. The honeycomb clusters and bees create a split design, and both the trail and sentiment balance out the card from top to bottom. The final card uses one of the full stenciled panels. A simple sentiment with a bit of sparkle is all that it needs to shine. I hope you're inspired by all the ideas shared in this video on how to use the Bees Knees Kit. You can find all these products in the Tell it Expressions web store at tailoredexpressions.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.